We told you a little bit earlier about how the cruise industry hopes to be back on waters uh, maybe as soon as July. It's not a guarantee, not a given. Uh, but in Alaska, uh, it, it can't come a moment too soon. That's a big industry up there. Uh, and doesn't Connell McShane know it? Right now, joining us out of Seward, Alaska, popular uh, port for these ships that go in and out, and a lot of them, but not now, not lately. How do things look, Connell? Not great, Neil, to be honest with you. I mean, these new guidelines you're talking about from the CDC should indeed help the cruise industry to get back on its feet in other parts of the country. It's more complicated here in Alaska. And at this point, the state looks like it's headed for yet another tough economic summer. Port City of Seward is nestled between the mountains and the ocean. And its dock is the first stop for so many cruise ships coming into the 49th state. The pandemic stopped all of that. Seward has definitely become more and more a tourism town over the years. We are part of the Kenai Peninsula Borough and we had the strongest, farthest drop in sales tax last summer. Mayor Christy Terry was hoping for a rebound this year for Seward and for Alaska tourism, which accounted for four and a half billion dollars in economic activity in 2019. Sixty percent of that came from the cruise industry, which remains sidelined thanks to a 19th century law that bans foreign flagships from moving directly between two U.S. ports. The major cruise lines register their vessels offshore for economic reasons and normally would make a pit stop in Canada. But with ports there still closed due to COVID, those ships from Seattle can't make it here to Alaska. Senator Lisa Murkowski met us in Anchorage to talk about her efforts not to scrap the old law, which is meant to protect American shipbuilders, but to at least provide a short-term fix. Right now... We've got next to nothing. So you want to put a waiver in place, gets us through this it year? It is a temporary waiver that gets us through this year. And when I say this year, for us in Alaska, it's not a year. We're talking a six-week season. That's all we're going to get out of this. Murkowski's bill is still held up in Washington, and she worries about the damage back home. Some of the restaurants that we have seen closed will not be coming back. The, the little shops that line the streets that sell everything from from Alaskana to to T-shirts uh, might not be coming back. No doubt the impact is far reaching. We drove more than 200 miles inland to the village of Talkeetna to visit K2 Aviation, owned for 25 years by Suzanne Rust. I think the whole situation has been challenging because most of us have a plan. You know, we have a plan, a business plan or a work plan or a family plan. And this is a situation where things rely on so many things outside of our control. And so we have to kind of accept and adapt. Tourists come here for the breathtaking aerial views of Denali, the highest mountain peak in North America. So much so that officials estimate two thirds of local revenue is tied to the cruise ships. And that has America's last frontier clinging to the hope those ships enter its harbor once again before it's too late. There are some signs of life here for tourists flying uh, into Alaska. I can tell you anecdotally, our flight earlier in the week was packed, and maybe that softens the blow a little bit, but no one expects it uh, to make up for the loss, Neil, of those cruise customers, you know, for businesses all around the state. And again, because of this issue with Canada, it doesn't look like they're coming back anytime soon. Just amazing, because as you indicate and show, it's just a stunning state. I mean, uh, it, it's huge, but it oh, is man. stunning, and people are missing out on it. They're all missing out on it. Connell, yep. thank you. That report was excellent. Connell, at Seward, Alaska, very popular port protocol. That's your entree to that whole region, and right now, frozen, stopped. All right, in the meantime, uh, we've got Kennedy with us. She's looking at developments like this, and a nation still uh, shut down in some areas. You know, I think, Kennedy, I was thinking of you when... Uh, you know, all of this stuff that's going on. Um, some are changing quickly and reopening. Others, like the cruise industry, not so fast. And in Alaska, not at all. What a mess, you know? It is a mess. And, and I, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there watching that. Uh, beautiful pictures from Connell, by the way. Great reporting. Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to figure out 
What is the cruise ship equivalent of what restaurants have been doing with their sort of outdoor lean-tos that they have built uh, here in New York City? You see them all over the place, and that's how the restaurant industry has survived. And I don't know what the workaround is there. As Senator Murkowski said, you know, you've only got six weeks to make a year's worth of money. Uh, Alaska's kind of famous for that. You know, we watch the show Deadliest Catch, and the fishermen go out uh, <laughs> for a couple of three-week seasons and, you know, try and make... A million bucks each. It's a heck of a way to do it. But I, I don't know how, how you do that. And people love cruise ships. They don't want to give them up. And maybe they just have to have uh, vaccinations on board, vaccination stations uh, next to the shuffleboard. Yeah, yeah, what's weird about it is a lot of the cruise lines are doing just that, Kennedy. I know we have the Norwegian Cruise Line CEO on. He says, no one gets on his ship, uh, either those who work on it or those they're working for, the passengers, without proof that they've been vaccinated, submitted that to the CDC, and it was hurry up and wait. Now we're told, and hope springs eternal, that that will change, but there's no guarantee even now. No, they, they got to get things moving. Like we saw with the vaccines, that's how every government process should be now. Enough of this paper pushing and hiding behind, uh, you know, the, the next bureaucrat. Just make things happen. Get out of the way. Get the government out of the way. These businesses are smart enough to survive. They are smart enough to comply. People who come on board, they want to do their part as well. They all want to be healthy. They all want to be safe, but they want to have a good time and they, they want to live life. Everyone is ready to do that. So if, if the government if the CDC is the thing that's keeping them from making money and keeping families from vacationing, we know how to do this smartly now. We figured it out. We're 14 months in.